What's up, Mortgage Coach community? Dave Savage coming to you live with Jason Hartman. Uh, someone that I have known. Jason, I think we first met, it, I don't know if it was 30 years ago, but it was definitely over 20. It's a while, yeah. <laughs> so It's been so a minute, as the millennials say. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a few decades, guys. And yeah. Jason was one of the most successful realtors and teams and real estate entrepreneurs in Orange County back when I was a, an operator in the space. And today he's one of the most prolific investors of real estate in America. And he's an advisor and he's got a podcast. And I don't personally know anyone that's creating more content, more leadership for people who want to invest in real estate. So we've got Jason today going to talk about, is it a good time to invest? Uh, what, what are the riskiest investments? What are the least risky investments? And he's also going to share some new things that he has going. So what's up, Jason? Hey, Dave, good to see you again and good to be on the channel with you again. And, um, you know, everybody's talking about where is the market going? Uh, you know, we've definitely seen a massive increase in interest rates. It's pretty shocking. It's it's one of the most abrupt increases ever. And, um, you know, it, it's just a question of where where is it going? I mean, you know, really, where is it going? And I think if you look at the inventory stats, it uh, shows, among other things, the lack of distressed homeowners um, and, and still affordability being quite a bit better than many people think, believe it or not, when you really look at it properly. Um, I think this market has a ways to go. You know, I don't think we're at the breaking point yet where we're going to see, uh, you know, any big crash. And now that's going to come some days. Well, that correction will come eventually, but it's not here yet. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. You know, that's something else I wish I would have included you in this, but I can add you to it. I did a, a halftime report. So yep. I interviewed about 25 industry leaders and I'm actually, I think I'm going to edit this and add you into it because I know that you're going to have some perspectives that um, add value to it. So I'll put a link to this down below for anyone that wants to check out the halftime report that I released um, last week. So, so Jason, let's, let's net it out. We got about, I don't know, a little over 15 minutes left. What are some of the biggest um, trends that you think mortgage professionals should be tuned into? And what do you think is most important for them to hear? Well, number one, um, balance your business. Don't just be focused on, I mean, I don't need to say this anymore because this saying this is too late, but you know, for those mortgage people who were focused solely on the refi business, obviously their business is over and um, you gotta have a balance of refi versus purchase business. Uh, that's just prudent for any good mortgage person uh, to constantly nurture that purchase business because it is way more consistent than the refi business. The refi business is, you know, feast or famine. We all know that, right? And so uh, uh, that's one of the things. And when you're talking to buyers and when you're talking to your realtors that you're receiving purchase business referrals from, um, you know, a lot of talk has to be focused on housing inventory uh, and, um, uh, you know, a, a lot of, of stuff has to be considered around housing and inventory, which is still actually quite low. It has been ticking up quite a bit uh, since uh, the Fed uh, pushed the rates up so high, but uh, still historically, it's very, very low. In fact, uh, toward the end of 2019, we had double the amount of housing inventory we have today. So we are in a still very severe inventory shortage. It's ticking up every single week, and I can show you some charts on that, uh, but still very low overall. Well, I would love to see those charts. I would love to know what you think is going to happen with values. I know a lot of folks are still, we're still recommending buying duplexes and triplexes and mortgage coaches are out there in the marketplace telling high school students and college students that make it a goal. You know, your, your first piece of property should be an owner-occupied duplex or triplex. What are your thoughts? Do you still think yeah. that's prudent advice? Well, you know, I, I think um, you can do the house hacking with the, the duplex or the triplex where you live in one of the units uh, kind of thing. Um, you do get better quality tenants, though, in single family homes. So it just depends. You know, you're usually going to trade uh, cash flow and income and the ability to house hack. Um, which is good for a first property, but for a, a portfolio of properties, if you want to deal with like better quality tenants that don't move as much that aren't so transient, then your single family is going to be better. But when starting out, 
the house hacking idea with a duplex is, is great. That's a great way to start because you can get an owner occupied loan and that the terms are better and more favorable. And so, uh, you know, it enables you to do that on that, on that duplex property. Yeah. And offset some of your payment. And if you really do it right, sometimes you can, you can actually cover your, your rent. Uh, so good. Well, tell us what we're looking at here. And I, yeah, I so, love empowered investor. Yeah. So this is the housing inventory at the end of the first quarter. Uh, we have the lowest inventory ever about 241,000 units at the time. And that was like walking into the grocery store and seeing about 66 to 80% of the shelves empty. Okay, just empty shelves. Uh, but it did start to tick up as we'll see. And I think it's really good to look at the market like this, to kind of look at it as though, you know, we've got the new listings coming into the market. That's the water coming out of the faucet. The uh, the current inventory is the water in the sink. Now there's no water in this sink, but you get the idea, you know? <laughs> and then the buyer demand, the sales, uh, are represented by the drain. That's what's being pulled off the market when it's selling, right? So the question is, what part of this equation is changing? You know, more sellers coming into the market. In other words, the water coming out of the faucet is faster, or is it fewer buyers buying? And really it's a combination of both, but uh, I'll just tell everyone today, we are nowhere near this type of situation where that inventory is high, or about to overflow inventory is still extremely low. And let me just get to uh, another chart on this. I'm gonna zoom ahead. Well, really this one, we had a 16 year housing shortage. And this is especially acute in the entry level price ranges. So this is extremely severe. We have not caught up. We have not made up for this. Uh, the builders cannot build entry level homes fast enough. Uh, so all of those numbers I just talked about are overall inventory, but especially acute in these lower price range entry level homes that virtually, Dave, as you know, nobody is building. Okay, right. I, I, the builders just can't build them anymore. They're just not profitable for the builders. So that's why they're not building. them. And uh, those are the rental type properties. Uh, you know, here, here's an article for you on that just quickly. Uh, you know, I just thought this was really telling in USA Today, you know, are we at the, you know, is, is the first time buyer home just totally extinct, right? And, and we all know that that is the case. So uh, it's, it's uh, especially troubling there. Or, or so, good so for what, investors, depends how you look at it. <laughs> right. So, so what is, oh, by the way, Christy Gannon just said, I'd love a copy of the data to share. Is this acceptable? Are you willing to share any of these slides? Yeah, I'll, I'll give out a link actually right now. Uh, people watching can go to jasonhartman.com slash slides and they can download the slides. jasonhartman.com slash slides. There's going to be a whole bunch more there than we will have time to talk about today. So, uh, you know, there's a lot more there. If you just go to jasonarman.com slash slides, you can get them. Cool. So guys, keep the questions coming. Uh, good one. And we just got that for you, Chrissy. Uh, let's see. I thought I saw another question come in. What, what do you, what do you think is going to happen with values this year? And, you know, where, where do you no. think, and I know it's a, you know, market by market, you know, not all markets are equal, but if, you know, last time I talked to you, I think it was in the, um, in the middle of COVID and, and buying in downtown New York was not advised by you. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm exaggerating to make a point, but what, where are the hot markets? Where are the weak markets? Where are we going to land on things? You know, the, like the old saying goes, all real estate is local. That's definitely true. All real estate is local. And um, there are three basic types of markets in the country or the entire world, linear, cyclical, and hybrid markets. These good linear markets, good cash flowing markets, the markets that are boring, the markets you'll find at jasonhartman.com on the properties page, those markets are very, very stable and improving. Uh, well, some of these high flying markets in Phoenix, LA, uh, San Francisco, of course, having lots of troubles because what goes up really fast comes down really fast. And, uh, and uh, they're much more sensitive to the increase in interest rates. So go to jasonhartman.com, look at some of the properties. 
in the markets that you're you're focused on. Make sure you follow um, your podcast. Do you have any thoughts or recommendations on interest rates? Do you think they're going to come down for the end of the year? Oh any man, perspectives? I tell you, interest rates are incredibly hard to predict. I think the Fed really screwed this whole thing up. I think uh, I'm very critical of the Fed right now. They should have raised rates much sooner and much more gradually. They let the economy run way too hot for way too long, and then they raise rates too suddenly. And the talk is they're going to keep raising. So we might we might look back and think today was kind of a good bargain. <laughs> I know that's hard to believe. And we just had it tick down a little bit last week, which is great, a little bit of relief. But we've got to remember just, you know, one of the things I always say on my podcast and on my YouTube channel, Dave, is I always ask this question, and I think it's life's most important question. And the question is, compared to what? Compared to what? What we saw during COVID is we saw the lowest interest rates, quite literally, in 5,000 years. There, I mean, if you, there's this great book by the late David Graeber. It's called Debt, the First 5,000 Years. And there are uh, historical records of interest rates going back to ancient Egypt, if you can believe that. And we literally had, in the COVID era, the lowest rates in 5,000 years. So that was an anomaly. We have to just throw that out, okay? Uh, because it, it was just an anomaly. But um, I'm still just the same critical of the Fed because they, they just waited too long and, and they let the economy get out of control. They let inflation get out of control. And uh, now it's this knee-jerk reaction, unfortunately. Now, I know you are a big fan of Mortgage Coach and the total cost analysis and the ability yep. to localize and personalize um, advice for families. I've been talking yep. to loan officers a lot that you should have, you know, five to 20 slides, just like you did. We're on a call right now and you pulled up some slides for insights, insights and data. And then yep. you should be able to, you know, ask a family, you know, what are your hopes, dreams and goals? What do you think rates are going to do? What are you trying to do? And then you create a total cost analysis. Could, could you just share? Cause you, you know, you, uh, are, do you still consider yourself a realtor? I mean, I just consider you. A, no, I haven't been in traditional real estate in many years. Well, how, what would you call is, yourself? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm more of an economist and a teacher, I think, uh, than anything. But what my, what my main company does is we help investors buy properties nationwide and we help them build portfolios of mostly single family homes little bit of uh, the plexes and uh, some bigger apartment complexes and so forth, some other properties. But the vast majority of our business, single family homes nationwide in these good linear markets. We help people buy them. We run a referral network. I've been in that side of the industry, which is a real cottage industry for the last 18 years. Got it. So what advice do you have when it comes to loan officers that want to be leaders to realtors? Um, you know, how many slides should they have? What kind of data would you have handy if you were a mortgage professional? And, and what are your thoughts on a total cost analysis? Yeah, well, I think the thing you can do is you can use your software, okay? And really uh, give those realtors tools to help their buyers and sellers make good decisions. You know, for, for example, now one of my favorite features uh, back when I used Mortgage Coach it was the adjustable versus fixed rate comparison. And we are moving back into a market where those adjustable rate loans are looking more attractive because the fixed rates got so expensive now. Before it was like fixed rate only, I didn't want to even talk about adjustable rate mortgages, but now, you know, it's worth considering, right? And so it's really important to have a, a software tool that helps you analyze this stuff. And, uh, you know, they, they can help their clients analyze uh, through, through uh, that relationship. What are your thoughts on this strategy? We're seeing this pop up a lot in our market right now, yeah. where there was a seller sure. that wanted to sell the home for this, buyer that wanted to buy it for 630. Uh, the listing agent said, don't even bother writing an offer. We're not going to counter it. And, you know, smart mortgage coach said, hey, what if we did a three point seller buy down? Mm -hmm. Two points buying down the rate, one point going towards cash to close. Yep. You know, it, it was a compromise for the buyer. The seller knew that they weren't going to get full price. What are your thoughts on 
seller funded by debts. You think that's I a think, good strategy in this market? I think it could be a great strategy. I'm in, I'm usually in favor of buy downs because when it comes to our investors, you know, what we're teaching them to do is hold properties long term. And so the buy downs can be very useful. It's just a matter of the time horizon. So from the buyer's perspective, you know, if they're paying three points versus one point or no points, you know, how long does it take to break even? You can simply you know, use the software, of course, or just do the math by hand or on a spreadsheet. And you can you can look at that as a seller. It can make the property a lot more attractive. Unfortunately, though, the one thing, the hurdle you're going to have is you got to be able to usually communicate with that buyer in order to pitch the buy down scenario, because Sadly, and I think this is really wrong the way the industry is set up. When you when you look online, when you look at Zillow, Redfin, whatever, you know, everything's just the price. When hardly anybody actually buys a house based on the price, they mostly buy it on the payment. Right. It's silly. It just makes no sense. But that's the way the world operates. And it should not operate that way. That is not a good way to operate. The world should operate on a payment, not a price. So what are your thoughts on, you know, because we're, so we're seeing to create affordability right now, we're seeing buy downs and we're seeing arms. What are your thoughts on a, an interest only arm, a 10 year interest only versus a amortizing loan that drives the cash free? Any, any strategic thoughts? I mean, obviously we could put that in a TCA, but I, I would love to know strategically how you think of interest only versus fully am. I am a big fan of interest only. However, um, if the rate is a lot higher, it depends on the premium I'm paying for that interest only. So a lot of these are, are underwritten as 40 year mortgages where the first 10 years is interest only, and then it amortizes for the 30 on the back end. And I think that's great. I love the program in concept. My only question is, what is the premium I've got to pay to have that program? But I think right. the program itself is great. And, and, it, and that's a little more common on big apartment complex, you know, commercial stuff. So, oh, yeah, but right, single guys. family homes, they offer that. Yeah. Yeah. So, first of all, if you have questions for Jason, put them in comments. Even if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll get to your questions. Jason, I want to make sure people follow you. What are the best ways people can get value from you beyond today's conversation? Yeah, you know, my YouTube channel and my podcast are the best. If you want some shorter clips, I've got almost 75,000 followers on Instagram. And there's like nice little quick, short, digestible clips there. Uh, or on even TikTok, I just started doing that. We've got over 5,000 there. Um, and, uh, you know, all the usual social media places. But really, the podcast is called The Creating Wealth Show and the YouTube channel. Uh, those are you know, where you get the big amounts of content. And Dave, I got some stuff that I think your audience will be really interested in because they're battling these interest rate questions. And, Brilliant. you know, this is what everybody's saying. Interest rates are too high, right? We've heard it a million times. We've thought it a million times. But the problem is they're not asking the right question. The question is, compared to what? That's the question. Compared to what? We talked a few minutes ago about comparing it to mortgage rate histories. Sure, that's fine. But what blows my mind is this. Look, for 10 years, give or take, we had you know people that were more than willing to pay a mortgage that was maybe, I'll just pick a number, four and a half percent, you know, right in the middle, it went up, down, you know, but I'll call it four and a half percent. When the government was telling us, the inflation rate was 2%. So if the cost of money is 4.5% and the inflation rate, the, the rate at which money is being devalued by inflation is 2%, then our net interest rate after inflation is 2.5%. People were willing to take that deal all day long. Millions of people took that deal. We all know that, right? But they never asked themselves compared to what today. Let's look at the deal today. The government tells us as of last month, CPI, Consumer Price Index Inflation, is 8.6%. This one's only 8.5. So I got to update this slide from a month earlier. Okay. 
And the mortgage rate is actually a little lower than this now, but you know, on an investment property, not owner occupied, you're gonna pay a little more. So let's just round it off at 6%. You're getting a negative interest rate of 2.5%. 2 you're getting paid to borrow the money. It's mind boggling to me that people think rates are high when they're actually quite low. But wait, there's more, as they say on those late night infomercials. <laughs> the real inflation rate, I say, is about 17%. Now, you could argue with me on this, but almost everybody will agree that the consumer price index is a complete scam and it's a total lie. We could go down that rabbit hole for hours. I have mountains of evidence on this. But let's just all agree that inflation is some, some number higher than the government would have us believe, okay? I think it's about 17%. So then let's look at the equation. If you borrow at 6%, your negative interest rate is 11%. That's how much you're getting paid to borrow the money. Take some tax benefits. You're getting paid 13.4% to borrow money. We have negative interest rates. Before we had positive interest rates. In other words, the rate was above the rate of inflation. It is extremely rare in history. There have only been a couple blips for very short periods of time where mortgage rates have been lower than the official rate of inflation the government tells us. So we have officially negative interest rates now not unofficially unofficially we've almost always had negative interest rates in you know since i've known you okay you know for many decades right i mean there have been a few times maybe not but mostly the real rate of inflation has been higher than the rate you can borrow on a mortgage but now it's official and it has been for a while that is interesting um... interest rates are not that high my friend everybody thinks they are now here's the thing though here's the catch what if inflation goes down what if they do tame inflation and say inflation goes to now how are they going to do that first that's the question right they they tame inflation by raising interest rates and cooling the economy right then the economy cools off inflation cools off everything's back to normal and then we're in a recession and what do they do then? Well, they got to lower interest rates because the economy is getting too cool. And then, and then, you know, we come out of the recession as they heat the economy up. I mean, look, we see this cycle over and over. It's like a roller coaster. Okay. So that's the time at which you do a refinance, right? Now, what's interesting is these non-QM lenders, okay, these portfolio lenders, a lot of them are writing their deals now with three-year prepayment penalties that tells me that they believe rates are coming down that may not be true it may not happen but that's just what i think they think because otherwise why would they have to build big prepayment penalties in there that are actually pretty stiff okay in many cases um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but. Well, I just want to show for you saying. mortgage coaches out here. I am seeing, this is an example of a TCA. I'm seeing a lot right now where a loan officer is talking to a consumer about different rate options. And then they're, they're showing that future one, like what might it be? And they're getting it for the consumer. And so I do think most people, you know, do think that rates are coming down. I do want to remind all of you. You know, the, the, the mortgage coach way is giving people options, you know, showing different cost options, showing different down payment options. Uh, make sure you follow, if you want to be an expert, one, you need to know the trends. You need to know, like, we believe that our job as mortgage professionals is help families build wealth with real estate and achieve financial freedom. So you need to follow Jason. You need to make sure you are an expert on real estate investing. You need to make sure that you're hearing different views around the economy so that you can be a leader to families and to agents. And then you need to be able to net it out for them in their local markets based off their beliefs and their goals. Jason, any closing thoughts, anything you want to make sure you share with the folks before we wrap it up? You know, look, there's obviously a lot to talk about. The market has been crazy lately. These interest rate increases have really shocked people. Um, you know, 
we, we are at a time of some sort of transition, but I don't think we are at a, anywhere near any kind of concern about a real estate crash or anything like that. Look, if you want to have a crash, there are many ingredients you need to have all line up at the same time. And one of them that maybe we talk about next time we're together, Dave, is what is the current homeowner like? Are they under any distress like they were before the Great Recession? No. And the answer is no. You you just nodded your head. They are not. They are doing great, actually. I mean, 40% of the homes in America are free and clear. 24% of them have mortgages below 3%. Do you really? think those people are selling? I mean, God, that mortgage has become such a huge asset to them. Any mortgage that's out there that exists that is lower than the current rate means someone will want to hang on to it because that mortgage actually becomes part of the asset. You know, most people consider the property, the asset, and the mortgage, the liability. Uh, uh, uh. The mortgage many times is the asset itself. Okay. And we saw that when I demonstrated negative interest rates. So, um, how many did you say were under 3%? Uh, under 3%, 24% of the existing first lien mortgages, and this according to Black Knight, okay, are below 3%. Now, that's only below 3%, but how many are below 3.5%? How many are below 4%? How many are below 4.5%? Yeah. They're all below market. Yeah. No, that it's mortgage really, has really... gone up in value. It's like a yeah. bond. And you, know, and you know what's going up for sure is rents. You know, we can talk oh. about that more in detail. I mean, between the the shortage of supply, yep. folks aren't moving, rents are doing nothing but going up. So uh, and if you and, and let me tell you something, rents always lag prices by at least two, probably three, maybe even four years. So we've seen big rent increases, but let me tell you something, you ain't seen nothing yet. Rents are going up a lot more. And I have two indices. Uh, that we didn't have time to talk about today, but one is called the Hartman Comparison Index, which talks about housing prices and mortgage prices, if you will. Uh, you know, in other words, the payment on the house and how affordable or unaffordable is it, right? Is it cheap or expensive? It answers that question. And a new index I've developed, the HRI, the Hartman Rent Index, which does the same thing with rental values. And let me tell you, rent is not that expensive yet it's going to get a lot more expensive well we're going to have to have another call soon i did get a report that that oh yeah no the jason hartman slides does work christy said it didn't work it works and it's also you can go to slide hyphen deck and uh so i will put a link down below it does work someone said it didn't um but hey bro i appreciate your time i appreciate you coming into the community uh, bringing your value. Guys, follow this guy. You will be smarter. You will be a better mortgage coach. You will help families build wealth with real estate. And you will help people achieve the American dream, which is home ownership and financial freedom. And there's what it looks like, guys. So yeah. go check and Dave, it out. I did just test that. It does work. JasonHartman.com slash slide. So we're good. Yeah. All right. Take care, brother. And if you got value, give this a like, share it with your mortgage friends and your leaders. Take care, everybody.